GBS affects 5 to 35 percent of pregnant women, depending on which area you live in. One in 200, uh, one in 100 to one in 200 colonies women will have an infant with early onset disease. And uh, the incidence is one to seven per thousand live births in 1993, and it reduced with the screening and prophylaxis to 0.44 in 1999. So uh, it reduced the risk of GBS sepsis by 70 percent with intrapartum screening and prophylaxis. So the approach can be risk factor based as in UK, where maternal pyrexia, GBS bacteria, positive swab culture in the pregnancy, prematurity, previous baby with GBS sepsis or choriamnionitis are taken as risk factors. The CDC recommends uh, group B streptococcus screening at 36 weeks in all pregnancies. That's in the US guidelines. So this is a flow chart that shows uh, whether the baby has signs of neonatal sepsis, then you have to obviously proceed to full diagnostic evaluation and antibiotic therapy. If there is no sign of sepsis, then you look at the risk factors. If there is maternal choriomyonitis, as I said, this is being redefined with stricter criteria and uh, you have other factors that you look into. And if the baby has um, definite maternal chorea, I mean, if there is a definite maternal choriomyonitis, again, limited evaluation without lumbar puncture and antibiotic therapy. Um, then you look at whether the GBS prophylaxis was indicated for the mother. If no risk factors, you give routine care. If there were risk factors and the mother received adequate more than or equal to four hours of the appropriate antibiotics, you just observe the baby for more than 48 hours. If there is inadequate cover with antibiotics and she had the baby is a term baby, duration of rupture of membrane less than 18 hours, then also you don't need to treat. So this is a change from previous guidelines. If the baby is premature or the duration of rupture was more than 18 hours, then you do limited evaluation and observation for 48 hours.